Okay, I've got my Ford 8.8 .8 right here that I need to do some welding on. Uh, i got to make a torque arm mount for my Beretta LS swap. Um, I've done some homework. Uh, half of the internet says that this is cast iron and you need to preheat, postheat, use nickel rod, get everything perfect or you're going to have a uh, failure point on your weld. The other half of the internet says it's cast steel, it's a piece of cake, mig it, send it, you're done. Um, but what I have found is that it's actually neither. You'll see here. I'm going to weld this piece of uh, mild steel on here. Uh, I'm going to do it with my MIG. I'm going to use stainless wire because it does have a little more nickel content. And uh, do that with no preheat, no postheat. And then after this is all set up and welded, I'm going to bash the piss out of it with my sledge and see if it breaks at the weld point itself or if the steel breaks past the weld. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to cut off the ears here uh, for the VSS to make room for my third link mount. And most of the internet agrees that these are cast steel, not cast iron, but I'm going to confirm that when I cut this off uh, and look for long yellow sparks and not short red ones. Hmm, those look pretty short and red to me. All right, well, I'm just some idiot, but I am pretty sure that test shows that this is cast iron uh, and not cast steel like half the internet says. Uh, probably nodular iron because it's sort of in the middle between regular cast iron and, uh, and cast steel. Um, that changes what I'm going to do with this then. I was just going to weld a bracket right here for the three link because uh, cast steel is easy to weld to. What I'm thinking now though, this is a two inch receiver tube. Well, it used to be. Um, and I'm gonna drill a hole in here with a bolt and a nut to fasten this on there really good. Also weld it uh, because I can definitely get some added strength even if it's not as good as a mild steel to mild steel weld. And uh, you know, weld that all the way around the perimeter I want to make sure that this holds up really nice um, because I have had the pinion angle off by like 45 degrees in the Camaro when it broke the, the welds on the center section on the Chevy 10 bolt and uh, set my pinion angle up. Smashed the whole drive shaft across. It was not a good deal. And uh, if, if this joint here breaks, it would do the same thing. It would rotate this whole rear end up and uh, raise hell. So I want to make sure this is nice and strong. The Dirt Lifestyle guy on YouTube found a spec for the Ford Dana 60s, um, which is nodular iron. And that's closer to cast iron than it is to cast steel. Okay, out with the mild wire there. Here's the stainless stuff. So, this isn't exactly the prettiest weld on earth, but I wanted this to sort of be a worst case scenario and uh, see how it fares after I bash it with the sludge. So then I'll knock it off the jack stand, that might be good. <laughs> Alright. 
So far it can take a decent hit. And it's bending the steel, which is a good sign. All right, that's good. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see here, all it did was bend the steel rather than show any kind of crack in or any sort of issues with the weld itself. Like I said, that's not a great weld, but it's good for this testing. So I'm happy with that. So nickel wire, well, not nickel wire, stainless steel wire, which does have a higher nickel content than regular mild wire. Um, with the heat cranked way up, seems to work pretty well for this. So I'm happy with that. I can do my torque arm mount with this and uh, not be afraid. Okay, I got my weld test here cleaned back off. And uh, I used some cardboard angle iron <laughs> to mock up my mount here. So I've got three bolt holes here. And I can run a three-quarter bolt through here. Uh, going to make something about like this. So I'm pretty confident in this weld after doing my weld test. But having a bolt to hold it in addition to the weld still isn't a bad thing. Um, and I'll have three bolts here, one big three-quarter bolt here. And actually the torque of the engine, uh, you know, as this, as this rear end is applying torque, it's going to want to climb. And that's going to push this in uh, and keep pressure on the rear end housing. So uh, I think I'm in pretty good shape there. But uh, here, let's see, how did I have this? So about like that. I got to do some trim up here and whatnot. But this is basically going to be my torque arm mount with a heim on the top and a heim on the bottom. I'll probably box this in somewhere, but I'll have lots of area to weld and uh, give myself a cheap, low buck, uh, pretty easy torque arm mount to, uh, to run with a Beretta. I also picked up a whole bunch of stuff on Black Friday from uh, Speedway and Barnes Four Wheel Drive to uh, make the rear suspension of this thing work. So here's gonna be my lower control arm mounts. It's going to be my upper coil over mounts. Should be all set. Uh, these are going to be the lower control arms themselves, and I've got some bar for it. But that will be in another episode coming up.